you should see my outline here for the webinar here today. It's kind of a combination of our introduction to the electrical bid manager as well as uh, overlap with the residential because one of the things we've found is that the commercial takeoff is a better way to go for the larger multifamily types of residential jobs. So that's what this one's going to be about here today. So we'll get started here. We're going to do a little bit of uh, background with the setup. We'll go in and show you how to do some takeoff and run some reports. Again, for those of you who are familiar with the, the Resi version of the program, this is a little bit different. This is using the commercial format. And again, it's the approach I would recommend when you're doing apartments, multifamily, condos, that kind of thing. Because those projects are really a kind of a hybrid. They're typically the, the units themselves are done in the more traditional format with Romex and plastic boxes and that kind of thing. And then the rest of the project is often more commercial where you might even have feeders and outdoor lighting and more of a commercial nature to it. So under settings here, just a couple of background things. Under program setup, under company, make sure that you've got your company name and address here because the company name prints on pretty much every report that comes out of the program. And if you want to use the form letters for proposals and any of the other form letter formats, this is where it gets some of that information for the form letters. So the other part of the setup is under settings, default settings, job, and actually you want to go to commercial. <clears throat> so you want to set up defaults for things like your sales tax rate. That's under job allocation under sales tax. That would be the rate that you're paying when you buy your materials from your wholesalers. Under job settings, over to the right, we're going to go to extensions and then direct labor rates. Now, this is just an example of how you might set up a crew if, you're, if your ratio of journeymen to helpers is one to one. It would be 50% journeyman, 50% helper. The base rate would be the average for that category that they see on their paycheck. And then the burden, now these two columns are tied together. If I change one, it changes the other. The burden adds in the employer's portion of payroll taxes, federal and state, if there are state payroll taxes that are paid by the employer. It would also include workers' comp, general liability insurance, and any benefits. So vacation pay, sick pay, health insurance, that would all be lumped under the burden. So that one may take a little bit of uh, homework to get a good handle on that number. And then finally, the other part of the default setup, this relates directly to the takeoff, is under settings, default settings, takeoff, Again, we're using the commercial format, but there's a special part of it just for residential jobs. So if you come up to this tab that says residential, it'll show you the footage of the wiring it's going to use for any of the residential assemblies. And I'll show you exactly what those are in, in just a minute. So let's go ahead and create a little practice job. So I, just real quickly, when you take off a residential switch assembly, right now the default is 20 feet of Romex. It could be 12 to 12, 3, 14 to 14, 3, whatever set up with that particular assembly. And then the dedicated circuits are going to get 75 feet. Appliances, 20 feet. Cable TV and telephone, 75 feet. If you're familiar with the residential version, this is a uh, a concept you've probably already uh, run into. Okay, so we're going to create a new job and we're just going to call this large resi job. Now, the work description, let's just say it's a 50 unit apartment. I'm going to put my name in for the estimator. 
you can put the square footage in, you can put customer name. <clears throat> Again, the more that you fill in here, the better it will be when you're using the form letters for proposals at the end. For now, we'll just hit OK. So the resi assemblies are under takeoff. So when you come down here to resi assemblies, these are all residential assemblies. So typically, again, they're going to have Romex wire, plastic boxes, and, and residential grade devices. So let's just take off a few to show you how it works. When you go to single pole switches, let's do 20 amp or 15 amp standard white. And we'll say that there are, oh, let's just do 50 to make it a round number. So you'll see down here at the bottom part of the screen, because it was the 15 amp device, it gave us 14.2 Romex. 20 feet apiece would be 1,000 feet. And then the boxes and wire nuts and nail plates and all the other materials that go with that assembly. So if we do a three-way switch, just going to pick a few here. We'll put in 30 of those. And now I'm going to do a multi-gang switch. We'll do two single pole switches. We'll say there's 10 of those. And we'll do two three ways. We'll do 10 of those. I think you kind of get the idea here, but let me do a few receptacles. Duplex. You've got some of the tamper resistant. Um, let's just Let's do a 15 amp tamper resistant. Now, if you want to see what's in that assembly, all you do is right click and hit edit. So there's all the parts that go into the assembly. Now, any time you see a zero for the quantity, the length on the wiring for the residential assembly, that means it's going to pick up that default of 20 feet. If you want to use another number, you can change it right here, or you can just change the setting. So we're going to go put some of those in. We'll say there's 30 of those. Let's say we've got some Decora. A lot of the time they'll put in Decora receptacles with standard switches. So I see a question here. question was about the default on the footage. Well, you can, you can see that the assembly is, is putting in a footage when you take it off. That's really the easiest way to do it without getting too much into the background. Again, when you go to these assemblies, if the footage is zero, uh, there will be an attribute assigned. And right now, I don't have the attributes assigned. Let's, let's back up a second, and I'll turn on the attributes so you can see that. On the program settings, there's a hidden window here. If you check all three here, and you go back to the takeoff, residential assemblies, duplex, oh, what we're doing here, the 20 amp Decora, 15 amp Decora. We're going to right click and hit edit. So this little tab for attributes tells you that this is a residential assembly using the default link for a receptacle. Again, that's probably more than you need to know, but again, you can always override that number by putting in your own uh, footage and it'll, it'll use that throughout the job. You can also go up to settings and take off settings. And if you change it here, It'll change it from that point on in the job. OK, let's do a few more. Let me scroll down here a ways. There's some dedicated circuits for things like a dishwasher. I'm just throwing some and a microwave. 
and we'll do a uh, air conditioning. So there's probably two, three hundred or more residential assemblies here. Now, including lighting, if you just want the program to put a price in, not do it as a quoted item like you want a commercial job, you go back up to here to where it says fixtures, uh, installed and supplied. Here's a six inch can and I'll put in 40 of those. So these have prices. You see the trim, the can, they all get pricing plus it gets the Romex wire. So that's basically the way all the residential assemblies work. The advantage of using the commercial version to do this is not only do you get a little better reports at the end, but you also get the, some flexibility with the takeoff. For example, I can go to fixtures, and let's say I've got some fixtures that need to be quoted, just like a commercial job. You can give it a designation. You can go to description. We'll do LED, recessed, downlight. And if we come down here under select items, actually it's, well, we got several ways we can do this. Here's the way I would do it. Yeah, let's go back there. Let's go back to outlet boxes. And you'll see here, here's a recessed ceiling fixture with either 14 or 12 or 12 2. Again, it's going to give you that 20 feet. And the advantage of doing it this way, it's also going to pick up the wire nuts and the uh, couple other miscellaneous materials for that fixture. So let's put 40 of those in. So again, this is a quoted item. It's going to prompt you at the end to put a price in. So if you've got any kind of a fixture package that's either not standard or that you want to put your own quotes in, this is where you should do it. Let's do one more here. Let's say it's an LED. We'll say it's a surface. And we'll say it's a four-foot LED. Let's do wall bracket. That's a good one. Now that one's going to need a box. So we're going to go to select items outlet box. Again, these all down here are plastic boxes. So we'll go surface matted fixture with 14.2 Romex. And we'll put in 25 of those. And we'll put in 20 for the quantity and hit take off. So again, that's one of the advantages of doing the fixture assemblies through here. You get the uh, I see a mistake there. Let's see if we go back and fix that. Oh, I think that was my mistake. I always tell people not to do this, and I just did it. On the outlet box, it's not 25 each. It's one each. I'll make that a quantity of 25, which is what I meant to do. So that's how you fix things. You go into the audit trail, you hit edit to source. Maybe I want to change this one from 40 to 50. When you hit edit to source and you change the quantity here, it'll update everything that goes with that assembly. So back in the fixture module now, if I do the report, it'll give me a printout of every fixture I need to get a quote on. You can print this with the little printer icon up here, or you can hit the Save button and save it as a PDF. From that point on, anything you would do in here would be just like a regular commercial job. Maybe you're going to wire the hallways and common areas and MC cable. You can come here and take off the MC cable. If you need conduit, again, either for a feeder or for some branch circuits, maybe there's some HVAC units, you can come up here to saved assemblies, EMT, set screw steel stranded wire, 
Here's one inch with three number eights and a number 10. Let's say I've got 10 units and I want to put in 60 feet a piece. That would be 600 feet. 10 runs. I'm going to put in 30 elbows and I'll make them field bends. For the support, we'll go to a unit strut strap. So hopefully what I'm getting across is that you, this really helps you with a job that is a hybrid of a residential and a commercial job. You've got all the residential assemblies under takeoff, under resi. And then if, for the rest of the commercial part of the job, you've got all the, the options there. If you want to do some panels, let's say we've got some load centers. We can go to load center. Let's say we've got 10 of them that are 100 amp. And we'll put some circuit breakers in. And we'll do a couple of two-pole 30s. And a three-pole 30. So the quantity here, I'll put in 10. That's quantity or labor each. And again, you can send out this report over here to your suppliers so they know what you need quoted as far as the gear is concerned. You could even do like a multimeter unit. We'll type in MM1. So let's say it's a multimeter board. Let's say it's 800 amp, maybe three sections. Probably has a main circuit breaker if it's 800 amp. And then under meters, we can pick how many and what size we want. So let's say, let's go. Oh, let's go to. 800 amp, and we'll do six sockets. And again, you can put any additional items you need in when you hit takeoff. You can hit OK. OK. I think the last thing I want to just touch on as far as takeoff, again, this would apply to the commercial version or the residential version. You can always come down here to other takeoff and either go to miscellaneous takeoff to take off anything from the database. I like the example of using a pull box because they're not easy to find. Click search, type in pull box. Here's the screw cover hinge pull boxes. We'll do NEMA 3R four inches deep and we'll do a 10 by 10 by four. Let's say we need 10 of those. To just make up an item on the fly, you can always go to Quick Temp. We need some widgets. We need 10 of those. Now let's make it 20. Then finally, if you want to import an item from Mapic, maybe we've got some Lutron Maisto dimmers we want to add in, you can hit Add. Hit OK, hit Import. So the manufacturer selection is up here at the top, the blue folder with the M. Come down and click on L. Now Lutron is all the way down at the bottom. Now rather than scrolling through 8,000 items here, if we know even part of the catalog number, you can type it in here. So by typing in MA6, you notice I didn't put the dash, and it ignores that. This is a good one right up here at the top. It's an almond. I'm going to export it. And I'm going to hit OK. I'm going to put in 10 of those. OK, I don't see any questions. So I'm going to go ahead and go down to reports. 
again, this is a major one of the major advantages of using the commercial version for residential is that you get the the job extension report that I think most people prefer in the commercial version. So when I go to job extension, now here I might even think about going down to column one. If I've got an apartment complex, it's pretty straightforward, maybe one or two units that are typical, I would hope to get a lot of productivity out of that. So I might go down to column one. I'm going to leave the price at target. That's the lower price that's updated and provided by Epic, our pricing program you just saw a little bit of. We'll just hit extension spreadsheet. Widgets are about 22 bucks a piece today. Labor is always in hours. A half an hour be 0.5. And then for that dimmer, we'll go 0.35. So this job extension, again, which you don't get in the residential version, allows you to easily edit the prices of the items. The only place you can edit the price in the residential version is in the audit trail. And if you look at the audit trail, it, it's only organized by the order that you put things in. The advantage of the job extension is it organizes things into other categories of similar items, like your conduits up at the top here. If we scroll down a little bit further, you'll see the lighting. You'll see the devices are here at the end. Let's say I want to change the price on that uh, Decora receptacle. You just double click. Now that's a price per hundred. 225 per hundred is $2.25 each. You hit save. When you're done making changes, you can hit refresh. Now these two lighting items that need to be quoted will be taken care of in the final reports, the job totals. So before we go there, there's our total material, the 9981. That does not include sales tax. It does not include include the quoted items and of course there's no markup yet. This 399 that's hours of labor. If we're going to print this we hit preview report. That's what it looks like when we print it. The save button again would save this report as a PDF file or the printer icon would print a hard copy. And again since we're in the commercial version we can go to job totals it prompts us to put a fixture quote and a distribution or a switch gear quote in. We'll hit OK. There's the 9981 from the job extension. We'll go to quotes. So again, if they give you an itemized price, you can put it up here at the top. Or you can come down here at the bottom and put a lump sum quote in. Up here, I can change from fixtures to distribution. And again, if you want to put itemized quotes in, you can. And then you just hit OK. So this 18,124, that's our total material. No mark, that still no markup, but it does include sales tax and the quota materials. So the other number, the other number that came from the job extension is this 391, and the 3105 was the average hourly rate that I showed you at the beginning. If you want to change the crew mix, the hourly rates, the burden, any of that, you can do so on the screen. It won't change the setup or, of course, any other jobs. It's just going to apply it to the job you're in. Same thing when I changed the price of that receptacle a couple minutes ago. Unless you tell it otherwise, it assumes that when you make those kind of changes, they're just job specific. Maybe this job needs some additional driving time. If you need to add something, you can always type into one of the blank lines. Under direct job expenses, maybe we've got to put some money in for some permits. 
You can also put money in for temporary power, equipment like trenching and backhoe. Even if you own it and you're not renting it, you would probably still want to put some money in to cover wear and tear. I'm going to skip down to subcontracts. You might be subbing out the trenching, the security. Let's say we're doing that. I see the question there. I'll come get that in a minute. So there's our prime cost. Before we put some overhead and profit, I'll see what the question is. Question is, why doesn't the non-productive rate derive its price from the labor column? I guess I don't understand where you're headed with that. The non-productive rate. The labor column is just the difficulty under the labor rate. Okay. Why doesn't it plug that 3105 in? Only because I don't have it set up that way in the, in the setup. You could definitely do that. I leave it at zero because I just gotten used to plugging it in on a job-by-job -job basis. But what you would do is go to settings, default settings for job, it's commercial, and that one's under extensions in the second row, under non-productive. So you would put it right here. Probably a good idea to do that. Um, that way you can't accidentally forget to plug a number in there. So we're going to go back to job totals. So this 33967 again, that's our prime cost, or what you might also call your break-even number. That's just what it's going to cost you out of pocket to purchase materials, pay your employees, your employees, any other direct job costs. So we'll just plug some quick numbers in for overhead and profit. We used to put a default number into the non-productive rates, but I think people didn't understand that they needed to review those, and, and it was easier just to change it to zero. But for an individual company that knows what their non-productive rates are, definitely not a bad idea to plug those into the, the default setup. The report I would do here, again, and this is an advantage of the commercial format, there's two reports here. There's the print summary. This one you can get in the in the residential version. If you hit the little door here, the print details is not in the residential version. And again, I kind of like the extra detail here where it breaks things down by phase. Now, for material, that's not maybe as critical. But if you come down here a little bit, you'll see how it breaks the labor up by phase. So you'll see how many hours you've got for lighting, how many hours for the branch wire, how many hours for above ground raceway. So again here, where this job is kind of a hybrid of a commercial and a residential job, it's nice to see how those different parts of the job come out. I think that's going to about wrap it up. I don't see any more questions. I would like to take just a minute to tell you about the other training options. Um, well, that's an old class list. I'll have to just, I didn't, forgot to update that. In addition to the classroom training, we offer one-on-one -on -one online training. You can purchase additional time. It would be a one-on-one -on -one session where we link in over the internet so we can see your screen. You're not watching somebody else do a presentation. You're doing it on your computer. We also offer on-site training where we can come to your office. We can do a custom session if you need help customizing any part of the program or you've got maybe more than a couple people to train, uh, maybe different levels. We can customize the session to whatever you want. The next classroom training is going to actually be at our home office in, San, in the San Diego area. It's actually Carlsbad, and it's the last two days of the month, the 30th and 31st. If you go to the website, it'll have the uh, current class uh, offerings. But at our classes, we offer introductory training, we offer advanced training on EBM, we offer 
a lab class where you take off a commercial job from beginning to end. And we also offer individual sessions that can be either with electronic takeoff or it could be with the residential format. Anything you want to do on an uh, individual sessions, we can schedule a one-on-one, -on -one, hour and a half session. Usually we do those either before the regular classes or after. Uh, we try to work them in uh, on the same, same days as the classroom training. I think that's going to about wrap it up. I'm going to turn it back over to Erica to sign off. I appreciate everyone coming to the webinar here today. First time I've done this, so I was working out a few of the uh, uh, the details or some of the uh, rough spots here. We will put a recording of this up on the website, and we will schedule a couple more of these here in the next couple of months with the residential, with the commercial format, if you're interested. Thanks again for attending the webinar.